Hello and welcome to Have I Got 2022 for You. I'm Gary Neville. I'm Joe Brand. I'm Richard Ayuadi. I'm Anna Maxwell Martin. I'm Clive Myrie. In the news this week, on the outskirts of Kharkiv, as a Russian military convoy prepares to advance, the Ukrainian Highways Agency finds an effective new way to signal its disapproval. <laughs> More frustration for King Charles as he drops his fountain pen and it rolls under the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> and there's evidence that before the Johnsons got married, Boris was given a graphic warning by Carrie's mum. Yes, that's the cues, the big, big cues. There's Holly Willoughby and Philip Schofield. She's wearing a mask, because clearly she's allergic to Philip Schofield. <laughs> um, people liked the experience of queuing. They liked being there. Mm. And then when they thought someone had jumped the queue, people got very cross. To be fair, Charles has been queuing for quite some time. <laughs> <laughs> Holly and Phil yeah. were accused of going there to make a piece and then just going in anyway. They apparently just appeared in Westminster Hall on Sunday. <laughs> Disappeared? They just appeared there. Like a haunting? Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Without having spent the previous 36 hours queuing. There's a huge petition. To, what? To stop, them, stop them jumping queues? It, to say, A, don't jump in queues, and B, <laughs> the death penalty. <laughs> Is there a cue to sign the petition? I tried to sign it, but this stinking pin didn't blow <laughs> In case you missed it, this is the news that Her Majesty the Queen passed away and her funeral took place on Monday. On the day of the funeral, businesses closed their doors, supermarkets didn't open and bin collections were cancelled. And that, Mick Lynch, is how you shut down a country. <laughs> The Labour Party have announced that at their party conference they will sing God Save the King after years of refusing to sing God Save the Queen. Well, they really do have a problem with female leaders. <laughs> <laughs> what BBC show is Prince Charles set the repair to appear shop. on? Yes, the, the repair, repair shop. shop. He's taken in Prince Andrew's reputation to see what they can do <laughs> there. <laughs> It's been in the family for years. <laughs> <laughs> in more cheerful news, the Royal Mint has now fixed a date for King Charles's head to go on the money. So look out for that on the new thousand-pound coin. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the drink in. <laughs> Is he taking urine samples? <laughs> I think you'll find he's been taking the piss for quite some time. <laughs> it was more than a party, wasn't it? But it was several parties. It was like an orgy. <laughs> they were told to leave by four in the morning. Is that a party? I've not been to parties like That's that. That's the Tory party. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the news that Boris Johnson is uh, not technically a criminal, but has successfully become the first sitting Prime Minister to have broken the law. Uh, the Met Police have issued him with a uh, fixed penalty notice for attending his 56th birthday party. That's a lot in one day, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nine minutes at each one, I mean, it soon adds up. <laughs> Don't you think you guys are being a bit unfair? He's the ruler of a country. He should be allowed to flex a little bit. I mean, <laughs> other rulers are having people dismembered, and we're angry because our guy shook a leg. Like, come on! <laughs> <laughs> it's just a house party. It's a shubs, man. Just let him live. God. I would let him live. I'm not... <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not advocating the death penalty. I think we don't have to go that far, but... Um, I mean, Matt Hancock, who was having a party for two people in a cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> he had to resign. Yeah. And that was bring your own, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and why hasn't the entire Tory party resigned? All of them. They supported him. Why don't they leave now? They're the party of law and order. There was a great one from Dominic Raab, who said that the Prime Minister had been as honest as he could be. <laughs> <laughs> who, do you know, has been leaping to the Prime Minister's defence again this week? Oh, it must be Jacob Rees-Mogg. 
Mm. Do you know what he said? Uh, God knows, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> He's been counting in and out civil servants of, of departments because he wants to end the work from home culture. Yeah. Absolutely. I actually feel a bit sorry for these civil servants though, because I, I think they're actually working from home because they're scared of being accosted by cake. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks people are sort of taking advantage of working from home to work less hard. Uh, here's Jacob Rees Mogg in his place of work. <laughs> He's lying in the House of Commons. <laughs> He resigned shortly before he was sacked. Yeah. We've got his resignation letter here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's written in Latin. <laughs> What's worrying Labour MPs as elections approach? They're up against the worst government of all time and they still can't land a punch on them. <laughs> First of all, they're worried that Labour leader Keir Starmer lacks charisma and isn't attracting voters. One Labour MP said they are looking in the shop window, but they're not yet necessarily ready to buy anything. A bit like me outside a whole food shop. Um, <laughs> and another senior Labour source said, whenever I see Keir, the image that often comes to mind is a wooden plank. <laughs> I don't want to go in too hard on him, but he looks like the type of guy that would cut your grass when you go on holiday. <laughs> I was doing mine, so I thought I would just do yours. <laughs> I mean, I think, as the British people, we, we, we don't know what we want, do we? We take the mickey out of Boris for being, a, like, a cartoon character of an idiot, and then we moan because the other fella's just too normal and boring. <laughs> I think maybe they should just, like, have sex and see what comes out. <laughs> I think that's the most unpleasant thing I've ever heard on this. <laughs> By quite a long way. A boring man you can't trust. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone abandoned Boris, though. Uh, who, who pledged undying support? Uh, Nadine uh, Doris. Doris. Uh, Nadine Doris. What might Boris already have given Nadine? Oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no. It is rumoured that she has been promised a peerage in Johnson's resignation honours list. Oof. A select list of about 300 people. <laughs> um, yeah. No one's sure what her official title will be. Ladbrook's favourites is Lady Barking. <laughs> um... This is the story about uh, Angela Rayner and Keir Starmer possibly breaking lockdown rules. Yeah. Yes. This is Keir and a beer and a mutt of paneer. <laughs> Back in February, he was investigated by Durham police over a potentially legal gathering in 2021 in the Durham Miners Hall where, according to The Sun, Keir Starmer quaffed... Gosh! A San is Miguel... that a true quote? He quaffed? Yeah. Yeah. A San Miguel lager... <laughs> <laughs> he quaffed it, Maisie! <laughs> and oh. ate... <laughs> a curry. Also, according to an anonymous person who was there and who messaged the Politics Joe website, it wasn't a social gathering because I hate them all. <laughs> <laughs> Some Tory MPs are still saying the party investigation is a waste of police resources and the Met needs to get back to what it does best, WhatsApping racist and sexist abuse to each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking like the next Prime Minister will be Liz Truss. Uh, don't take my word for it. It's right there in the Book of Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is the referendum, is it? Oh, and this is fun. You're a murderer. No, you are. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no fry zone. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's no to go after that. The good news is that yeah, the world yes. is still intact. Sure. We're all still here. Yeah. Well, you don't know, there's the repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well. <laughs> and if the globe is wiped out via a nuclear holocaust, won't you look silly? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what George Bush has had to say about oh, the conflict this yeah. week? It's absolutely spectacularly bad. Let's have a look. Here's, yeah. here's George Bush. Russian elections are rigged. Political opponents are imprisoned or otherwise eliminated from participating in the electoral process. 
The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. <laughs> Do you think he was coached to say, look, don't say Iraq? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> somebody could say, but don't, you don't say it. Yeah. Don't say Iraq. Yeah, I won't say that. I won't say Iraq. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he will have come home that night when he was going, <laughs> oh, I did the silliest thing at work. <laughs> <laughs> really? oh. Now, it was Vladimir Putin's 70th birthday last week. What was his gift from the president of Tajikistan? <laughs> I'm the only one who took an interest in this. Yeah, go on. He was given a pyramid of melons. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look. Oh. I mean, that's why you'd rather have a voucher. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the latest from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. According to one newspaper, Putin's reservists have been told to pack tampons to soak up blood from bullet wounds. And in the event of a nuclear strike, a small tube of ombre solaire factor 20. <laughs> Last week, Boris Johnson flew to Kyiv. You must be under terrible pressure and strain in the desperate situation. Our thoughts are with you, said President Zelensky. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last Prime Minister but three. <laughs> what a day. It has been tough. He's always been a bell end. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you guys are 90,000 points ahead in the poll, yeah. does that not scare them? They don't seem to have noticed. <laughs> it scares me. <laughs> 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 On current polling, there would be, like, three Tories left. Yeah. Like three. Ian Duncan Smith. <laughs> <laughs> The Times called last Monday a day of turmoil. The Independent called it an all-time low. The Daily Star had, honey, I shrunk the quids. <laughs> the new European just went with this. <laughs> the government's going to punish these people... Oh, yes. ..by taking the cap off their bonuses. Well... <laughs> <laughs> What we learned in the pandemic is that the people that keep the country going are our essential workers. We weren't clapping on a Thursday for hedge fund investors, were we? <laughs> you weren't clapping then for hedge fund investors. Yeah. <laughs> is Liz Truss the first Prime Minister to have gone to comprehensive school? Theresa May's school was a comprehensive school. No, it was selective. As was Gordon Brown's school. What about John Major? Selective. The key word is selective, because no one chose Liz Truss. <laughs> <laughs> I was intrigued when Angela Rayner said that some people think that because I had a comprehensive school education, I wouldn't be able to match uh, Boris in debate because he has an Oxford uh, uh, University education. And I wondered whether there'd been any kind of sort of public experiment over the last 32 years where two people with a similar educational background, one had been to Oxford, one had been to a comprehensive school, <laughs> where perhaps... <laughs> The various wits could be tested via, let's say, a, <laughs> a TV news quiz. And, and, uh, and, and whether those results are now ready to be published. <laughs> I, I think it's too early. I think we've got to wait until the Sue Gray report has come out. <laughs> and then the police will look into whether the competition's been rigged for 32 years, which <laughs> it has. <laughs> And now she's gone. In fact, her whole career was one enormous U-turn. She walked into Downing Street and then she walked <laughs> straight out again. She didn't drag it out. No, no, no. They dragged her out. <laughs> yeah. Did you notice, though, that when she was, like, giving her resignation speech, she was sort of weirdly smiling mm. quite a lot? I thought, oh, she's got Christmas Strictly. <laughs> <laughs> We used to have quite a good reputation in the world for stability. <laughs> and so I understand that's now gone. Well, yep. we can find out what they think. Let's find you... out. Can Liz Truss outlast the 10-day shelf life of a lettuce? A tout heure du jour et de la nuit désormais, avec une question, est-ce que Liz Truss peut durer plus qu'une laitue? Woraufhin dann der stellvertretende Fraktionschef das Parlament mit den Worten verließ, I'm fucking furious and I don't fucking care anymore. Fuck 
fracking, fracking. Keep sure. fracking. <laughs> fracking. I'm sure that's what she meant to say. Yeah. Um, the antitrust MPs apparently discussed a plot to oust her this week over a curry, leading the Sun to label them the Balti Bandits. <laughs> which would explain this headline, Man finds Boris Johnson in his chicken korma. There it is. <laughs> After the fracking vote, there were reports that one Tory MP was roughed up outside the division lobbies. I imagine he ended up with his eyes to the right and his nose to the <laughs> left. <laughs> He's a happy man filling up his petrol with his car with oh, petrol. He's been heckled. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we've got another Prime Minister. Yeah. And I think this programme goes out in time for that to be an accurate statement. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice change for us. I noticed that, you know, the Queen, the longest reigning monarch, coincided with the shortest Prime Minister term. And if every Prime Minister under the Queen had lasted the same length of time as Liz Truss, she would have had 560 Prime Ministers. <laughs> what did Rishi Sunak enter Downing Street without? A mandate. <laughs> <laughs> he went in without his wife. Boris Johnson <laughs> did that repeatedly. <laughs> Is it because uh, he tried to explain to her what a flat was when she was like... <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about Rishi Sunak showing that he knows how to fill a car with petrol, but what later emerged? It wasn't his car. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Really? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it wasn't his car. He borrowed it from a Sainsbury's employee. Even more embarrassing, it was electric. Rishi and his wife are worth £730 million, pounds, plus they'll get £400 pounds, uh, energy relief. <laughs> <laughs> After delivering his spring statement, Rishi Sunak was pictured filling up a car with petrol. The press instantly twigged that it wasn't Sunak's car, as the driver's side had no booster seat. <laughs> So this is Wayne Rooney, yep. obviously, top England goal scorer back yep. in the day. His wife, Colleen Rooney. Yeah. And then this is Rebecca Vardy. Have you been following this? I, oh, yeah, I've wasted the last three days of my life following this. <laughs> so this is Wagatha Christie. Wagatha Christie. Yeah. It was about football. Yeah, well... Which is why I was so interested. <laughs> Technically, Wayne, topic. as England captain, had to have a talk with Jamie Vardy to say, get your wag in order, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Colleen Mooney's been trying to prove that Rebecca has leaked things in the past. One of them being this story about Peter Andre, uh, that he's got a, 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 a... His manhood is equivalent to a chipolata after an encounter with her, and then it's come out that actually... Is that, was that her fault? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> nothing actually happened, apparently, between them. It does oh. say on the packet, prick with a fork. Has that got anything to do with <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I, I know Peter Andre, and he was telling me that Rebecca Vardy has got a humongous vagina. <laughs> um, this is the thrilling end-of-season clash between Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy. Wayne Rooney claimed he'd been completely unaware of what his wife was doing. Me sitting in this courtroom is the first time I'm hearing almost everything on this case. As anyone in a long-term relationship knows, there is a difference between hearing and listening. <laughs> <laughs> Two things my wife often says to me are, you never listen and, uh, and something else. <laughs> Is this Neil Parrott? Yes. Yes, he resigned after being spotted mm. watching pornography in the House of Commons. But I noticed that he was watching porn both in the House of Commons in the chamber and at a select committee hearing. <laughs> and you think, have you got nothing else to do? <laughs> yeah, but it's true, though, isn't it, when on film sets, when they make pornographic films, to get the uh, participants in the mood, they read out loud the minutes of parliamentary <laughs> speech. <laughs> What did he initially say, other than being on a combine harvester website? 
He didn't say he was going to resign well, he, straight away. No, he said there should be inquiry into who, who it was. Exactly. That's the maddest bit. He yes. went on camera being like, we need to find yeah. whoever it was that, yeah. <laughs> that did this, because they sound really messed up. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he apologised to his wife, and it really was a message to wives everywhere. My poor wife, I'm sorry you married a fucking idiot. <laughs> It's, it's an evergreen statement. <laughs> um, Conservative MP Neil Parrish resigned after watching pornography in the House of Commons. The Daily Mail described Neil Parrish as an MP who has campaigned passionately for better rural <laughs> 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 Time now for the odd one out round. Wiltshire council workers, John Mitten MP, Jeremy Clarkson and Jacob Rees-Mogg. Is that a giant traffic cone or a very small man? <laughs> <laughs> a clue, it's about, if you think about Clarkson's farm, think about how it's doing. It's not doing very well. That's right. It's doing very badly. And so Jacob Rees-Mogg is the only one that's been making money in recent times. John Mitten hasn't made any money since 1802 <laughs> because he's dead. Um, <laughs> The man from the council can't get any work because he's too tiny. He, <laughs> he goes into the depot and he's got this very squeaky voice and they can't hear it. <laughs> uh, so Jacob rees is the only one who's making any money because he's invested in Russia. Uh, true, but not the answer we're looking for. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, I will give you the answer. Yeah. It is that they have all been accused of being inefficient apart from Jacob Rees-Mogg, yeah. uh, because he is the government's head of efficiency. <laughs> um, now, Jeremy Clarkson's farm, uh, anyone know what it's called? It's called Diddley Squat. Mm. <laughs> and how much uh, declared profit did it make in the last year? None. Pretty close, £144. Um, <laughs> what were some of his financial bad decisions? Buying a farm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he bought a £40,000 Lamborghini tractor, uh, which was too big, and tried to grow wasabi, which was eaten by his pheasants. <laughs> um, which led to them sweating and squawking a lot. <laughs> now, how has uh, Wiltshire Council been inefficient? They're employing men that are far too small. <laughs> uh, they were widely mocked for painting this wonky line uh, in a village footpath. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wiltshire Council sprang into action and uh, rectified the problem uh, by removing the white line. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the other person in the round, uh, John Mitten. John Mitten, yeah. John Mad Jack Mitten. He couldn't be bothered to campaign for election, um, so he just bribed constituents with, uh, with £10 notes, um, <laughs> equiv equivalent to around £1,000 today. Uh, but then he found his time in the House of Commons boring and left after 30 minutes. <laughs> it turns out that during his first year of running a farm for a TV series, Jeremy Clarkson spent £40,000 on farm equipment manufactured by Lamborghini. Still not the only person in the public eye recently to be embarrassed by splashing out on a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> That got applause. <laughs> Let's hope it was applause. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round, and we start with... What no longer considered too rude for what? Vulgar fractions no longer considered too rude for mathematicians. Yeah. It was a good joke. Yeah. <laughs> I know it confuses people when I say something clever, but you've got to live with it. <laughs> Charles Dickens no longer considered too rude for TikTok. It's outrageous that the name Dickens was banned by TikTok for being too rude, said the head of the Charles Dickens Museum, Willie Coxblotch. What is going on? Why is it see some of these reputations sink? <laughs> Dear BBC, I was appalled to see the voice of the oh, nation talking dear. about someone called Willie Coxblood. Willie Coxblood. <laughs> sincerely, Mrs Willie Coxblood. <laughs> <laughs> Next, what found in stunned homeowners what? Party found in stunned homeowners' ground floor offices. <laughs> 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 it's somebody's face. Mona Lisa. 
Mona Lisa, I mean, you, you might want to compare the two. Equally beautiful. It's the face of Gandalf found in stunned homeowner's floorboards. Isabel Haldane discovered the wizard's face in the floor of her Scottish home. <laughs> <laughs> That's Gandalf the Grain. <laughs> <laughs> Next, you can now buy what for your horses, but it will cost you what? Top of wheels, but it will cost you freezer space. <laughs> <laughs> you can now buy... What? What can you buy? Designer <laughs> trainers for your horses, but it will cost you £1,000 per shoe. Yeah, and your mental health. Who's going to buy designer <laughs> trainers for a horse? Here they are. <laughs> no! This is the news that a shop called Horse Kicks will sell you designer trainers for your horse and not, as you might have assumed, ketamine. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, have you ever tried ketamine? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> what happened? He slept through one Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, Welsh Fish and Chip Shop celebrates Jubilee by what? I saw this, didn't I? I mean, they dyed everything horrible colours, like made the chips red, white and blue or something like that. Creating Union Jack Fish Supper is absolutely the right answer. Welsh Fish and Chip Shop celebrates Jubilee by offering Union Jack themed meal. Uh, this is what they're offering. <laughs> Where I come from, we have orange chips. Uh, that's like an actual thing in the Midlands. Orange uh, chips, really? They're like battered chips, but they put orange dye in it and you, you have orange chips. Uh oh, sw uh, sweet potato fries. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. <laughs> NASA astronauts still working from home. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan the dog in Downing Street reflects on a job half done. <laughs> Man in Shropshire frightens people in Australia. <laughs> Man who jumped out of plane without parachute wins coveted dog chair cup newspaper award. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll leave you with news that at a fun run in Suffolk, someone shouts Oi Tosser from the sidelines. <laughs> Police station in Karachi. An old lady realizes it could have been any of the men in the identity parade who stole her pet budgie. <laughs> <laughs> and the world of children's entertainment was in mourning this week after the sad news that Bungle from Rainbow had been found unresponsive in his Surrey flat. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. If you enjoyed that, then Frankie Boyle's New World Order will be right up your street. Press red now to watch on BBC iPlayer. Staying with us here on BBC One, because in a few moments' time, the one and only Peter Kay is here with his stand-up comedy shuffle.